But before that, let us have a look at the verbal reasoning section. So, on the GRE, the verbal reasoning, we have two sections. How many questions do we have per section? We have 20 questions. So, on the two sections, we have 20 questions per section. And we have 30 minutes to do these questions. The overall 40 questions on the two sections of GRE are divided into two types of major types of questions. The first type falls under the fill in the blank questions. The second falls under the The reading comprehension questions. The fill in the blank questions, we have two types on the GRE. The sentence equivalence questions and the text completion questions. The reading comprehension can be divided further into two types. You may get the short passages which are generally considered more to be connected with critical reasoning. Basically, these are single paragraph, maybe one question or maximum two questions you can get. The other are the more longer passages, which can be anywhere from two to five paragraphs and two to four, four questions can be asked. So how many questions do we get from each type? On each section, how many questions can we expect from a uh, a feedback of the students from my own taking of the test, I would like to tell you the GRE gives you a little more weightage to the fill in the blank questions than to the reading in the sense out of possible 20 questions you're get, going to get on each section, you may get around about 11 to 12 questions from the sentence equivalence and text completion questions and you may get 8 to 9 questions from both the short passages and the long passages per section. Now the sentence equivalence and text completion questions are the two fill in the blank questions. So let me explain what they are. The sentence completion questions are usually single sentence and single blank questions. For the single blank you have six options A, B, C, D, E, and F. This particular question is called a sentence equivalence question because for this single blank, the test maker wants you to select two answers which are equally appropriate for the blank. So if you were to select option A for the answer, then you'll also have to select option D or E or F or whichever you think is the correct answer. The challenge here is for you to get your answers right, both the options you select must be precise and perfect for the blank. Now coming to the text completion questions, you have here anywhere from a single sentence to a short paragraph as your question. The text completion questions have single, double or triple blank questions. So if you were to get a single blank, how do I distinguish the single blank text completion question from a sentence equivalence question? Basically, for a single blank text completion questions, you have only five options. And you need to select only one option. Remember, whenever you get the test, at the beginning of every question, there is an instruction. The instruction will clearly tell you whether you have to select a single answer or you have to select a double answer. So make sure that you are clear about it. So a single blank question on the text completion, you have to select only one answer. If you have a double blank, you have two columns of words, A, B, and C. Second blank, D, E, and F. So if you have a double blank question, 
For the first blank, you have to select from A, B, and C. For the second blank, you have to select from D, E, and F. If you have a three blank question, then you have a third column of words. Then you have G, H, and I. And you'll have to select from the third column. The challenge with the text completion, double blank and triple blank is, again, you have a huge amount of combinations of choices here. If you select option A from the first blank, then you can select from option D, E, or F for the second blank, and you can select from option G, H, or I for the third blank. So therefore, one needs to be perfect in selection of all the choices before you can say that you have really done the question perfectly. Okay. Now that we have an understanding of what the sentence equivalence and text completion questions are, how do we do them? What are the challenges before us? How do we tackle this particular question? What skills are required in order to deal with them? That's